we actually have some breaking news for you. I'll have a video uh, that'll probably be ready in about five minutes. It, it is hot, hot, hot off the cameras. I guess that's what they would say, not hot off the presses. Um, I'll let the video speak for itself, but our reporter in Ottawa, Lincoln J, bumped into Omar Al Gabra on the street. It looks like, uh, do we have it ready? Is that the video already? Wow. So it's ready already. This is literally 15 minutes ago. Just a little bit of backgrounder. Omar Al Gabra, or Al Jabra, is uh, the former head of the Canadian Arab Federation. And when he was there, he was a lobbyist for Hamas and Hezbollah. He lobbied the Canadian government to decriminalize those terrorist groups. He also condemned any Canadian leaders, including, for, in one case, a police chief who went to Israel on a, on, a, on a friendship mission. He condemned that, saying that Israel was complicit in war crimes and no Canadian police should visit there. Uh, bizarrely, he was appointed to Justin Trudeau's cabinet, but it's not bizarre at all because Trudeau made the explicit decision to court that vote. He can do, he can't balance a budget, but he can add the math up for votes. And in Canada, there are a million and a half members of the Muslim community. And hopefully the number of terrorist supporters is a small number, but there are a number of terrorist sympathizers, as we've seen on the streets in recent days. So Omar al Gabra was immediately appointed to cabinet and get, given senior positions. Well, our friend Lincoln J., bumped into Omar al-Jabra al al on the streets today and asked him a very simple question. Would he condemn Hamas? Watch the answers. My name's Lincoln J. I work with Rebel News. Just one quick question. Do you condemn the recent terrorist attacks committed by Hamas? Do you condemn the terrorist attacks committed by Hamas. Why do you think so many people here in Canada are trying to justify these terrorist attacks? You have no comments. You have no comments. It reminds me a little bit of uh, when Avi Amini and I scrummed the president of Pfizer, Albert Bourla, and asked him a series of very easy and reasonable questions, and he refused to answer. Do you condemn the terrorist attacks of Hamas? Is the easiest question in the world to answer. How could the answer be anything but, yes, I condemn them? Surely, if you're pro-Palestinian, you want to immediately show that you are different from terrorists, murderers, rapists, torturers. Surely you want to be reasonable because even if you yourself are not that reasonable, you're part of Justin Trudeau's cabinet. Actually, I'm not, I think he might be a former cabinet minister. I'm not sure what his position is now. We had on the screen there that he's a former um, transport minister. I know he's the MP from Mississauga Center. I find that incredible. There was no misinterpreting the question. It was repeated several times. He obviously heard it. He would not condemn Hamas. And I have to give him a bit of credit for that because that's honest. Because he doesn't condemn Hamas. And he wouldn't condemn Hamas because he supports Hamas. And he has for his entire adult life. You know, I made a video almost 10 years ago. Do you have that video I made, Olivia? I, and this was when Rebel News was very young. Um, it was, I think, in our first year. It, so we were just a few months old. And you can tell I had more hair back then and, and less gray hair. And uh, I was shocked when Trudeau appointed Omar al-Gabra to cabinet. But that is one of the ways Trudeau won. He courted the pro-Hamas vote. 
Here's a video I did nine years ago. I'm not sure if I'll play the whole thing, but I'll give you a sample of it. And I'll show you proof that he has literally been a lobbyist for Hamas and Hezbollah to get those two terrorist groups decriminalized in Canada. Take a look. Dangerous news. Justin Trudeau just appointed a Saudi-born extremist, Omar al-Jabra, to be parliamentary secretary to the foreign minister. He's now in charge of Canadian consular affairs, our consulates around the world. With thousands of Syrian migrants flooding into Canada and the risk of Islamic terrorism at an all-time high, this is a recipe for disaster. You see, Omar al-Jabra says that terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah are not actually terrorist groups. He doesn't think they should be illegal in Canada. He doesn't think Canadian journalists should even be able to call them terrorists. He even opposes having a Canadian no-fly list. Just curious, because he himself was once stopped by U.S. agents when he wanted to fly to the States. And this guy is now in charge of Canadian consular affairs. He's the deputy, really, to the foreign minister. He's an official parliamentary secretary. Oh, but boy, does he hate Israel. He's pathological about it. He doesn't even think Canadian officials should visit Israel. And anyway, it's a bit long, but I wanted to show you the evidence I had. I guess that was eight years ago now. He was so anti-Semitic, he had his funding cut off by the government. He went to court and the court said, no, you did some things replete. Your, the record is replete with anti-Semitism. He literally tried to get Hamas and Hezbollah legalized. That would be like someone trying to get the Hell's Angels legalized or the mafia legalized. What, what are you doing? And then to take that man and to put him in the cabinet. And he's been there for eight years. Like even just to deceive, even just to help his boss. Why wouldn't he say something like, I condemn all violence? How easy would that be to say? Or, yes, I condemn those attacks, and I stand with the rights of civilian like he, he could have even said something pro-Palestinian. He could have said, I condemn Hamas and and I also care about Palestinians or something. I don't know. It's not my job to come up with words for him. But there are many words he could say to condemn murder, rape, torture, terrorism, but still express his solidarity with Muslim people, with Arab people, with Palestinians with the people of Gaza. You have no comments. You have no comments. That's Justin Trudeau's key man in the, in the Muslim community. It's his Muslim lieutenant. It's the guy who when Trudeau would visit a town would make sure that there was always a stop at a Muslim mosque to campaign, to sell memberships. You saw the clip that I showed earlier from that old video I did in 2015, where Trudeau would brag about going to the Wahhabi mosque, which are the most extremist mosques. The one of the mosques in question was identified by the, um, by US, by the CIA as a recruiting um, place for Al Qaeda. Trudeau would knowingly campaign in an Al-Qaeda Wahhabi mosque in Montreal. And then he brags about it. He, it's not like he didn't know. He, he named it. Because al Gabra mapped out a plan and said, Stephen Harper is for the Jews, for Israel. Stephen Harper, perhaps the most pro-Israel prime minister uh, ever. I guess Mulroney was pretty pro-Israel too. Okay, but there's only 300,000 Jews in the country, maybe 330,000, whatever the number is, less than 1% of the population. But the Muslim population is at least 1.5 million, maybe closer to two. So it's um, five times larger. And they're not all Canadian citizens yet, but they will be in a year or two. And you're not going to outbid Stephen Harper for the Jewish vote. But you've got the Muslim vote all to yourself. I suppose Jagmeet Singh might try and compete for it, but you'll just go harder and further. And the way to do that is by literally signing up the anti-Semitic former boss 
of the Canadian Arab Federation, so anti-Semitic that he he lost his funding because the federal court said, yeah, this guy's just so anti-Semitic. So anti-Semitic, not just anti-Semitic, it's one thing to hate Jews, but this guy wants to legalize terrorist groups. Imagine being the, the lobbyist for Al-Qaeda or for ISIS. Well, Omar al-Jabba was lobbying for Hamas and Hezbollah. And we just saw what Hamas does. And by the way, we're sending a reporter to Israel, Avi Yamini. In fact, as I speak, he's boarding the plane in Melbourne, Australia, to fly with our cameraman, Benji, to Tel Aviv. He's there to tell the truth about the war. If you want to help us crowdfund his economy class airfare from Australia to Israel for him and for Benji and for their hotel costs and other costs, we're trying to find him a bulletproof vest, for example. Please go to the truth about the war.com. That's the special website we've set up. The truth about the war.com. From downtown Toronto, well, uptown Toronto, actually, in front of a line of police. This is Ezra Levant for Rebel News.